Welcome back ladies and gents, we are now looking at section 6 which is all about sectors, uh, the different sectors and how uh, they use data modelling. Um, for this section you will be looking at pages 82 and 83 and what you need to do is basically pick and explore two from a list of different sectors. Now I've already done the legwork for you basically provide you this so you can pick two from here, just two and talk about those two. You have to provide uh, examples uh, of uh, specific examples, uh, sorry, specific businesses from those sectors and how they could use data modeling to help make business decisions. So first things first, we need to understand what data modeling is and then we could talk about the sectors. So, um, organizations uh, need to make many different decisions about how they run business. Their business, sorry, to be more specific. Data modeling can help organizations understand the impact these decisions that make uh, might have on their business. Creating a data model involves setting up relationships between data. For example, there's a relationship between spending money and savings. The more money you spend, the less savings you will have. Data models can be used by organizations or individuals to help them plan by allowing them to investigate how changes can affect them, such as increases in prices, reductions in ex expenditure, uh, customer uh, consumer spending, changes to tax, and uh, so on and so forth. To put simply, boys and girls, data modeling is um, a system that you create, um, that you will be creating in this component in uh, Learning Game B, uh, which is linked to your data, uh, your dashboard. And typically speaking, we're looking at Excel documents. You can do one on database as well. But let's just focus on Excel for now. Now, some of you may have teachers, you may, it might even be myself, who use tracking sheets. Now, the tracking sheets are designed uh, to, you know, track your progress throughout the courses, coursework, you know, the course that you're, you're on. Uh, it will, of course, have the grade that you're working at at that point for specific sections. It might then give you an average grade, working grade that you're at right now. But more importantly, if you have different elements, like in this course, for example, you have the six pieces of coursework, you know, three learning aims for component one and then three learning learning aims for component two. Then, of course, eventually some of you will be, will be asking the question, sir or miss, what if I turned this section to a merit and if, if I turned this section to a distinction, what would my overall grade be? That is a form of data modeling because the system allows the teacher and you to see what would happen if you made a change here to the overall grade? You're almost like predicting the future and businesses do, businesses do the same thing. Okay. Um, now, I would show you an example, but unfortunately, because of data protection, I can't even show you uh, my tracking sheets um, since I'll be sharing this on YouTube. Um, in, unfortunately, if even if you have a student name on a, a piece of document, um, then I could be breaking the law. So unfortunately, I can't show you an example uh, as such, but I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Going back to the business uh, 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 you know, context, businesses will have to think about it this way. Businesses will be spending hundreds and thousands, in some cases, cases, millions of pounds for every new campaign, new product, new service that they come up with. Now, they can't take the risk um, and, and just make something just because someone's, already, someone's got the idea, let's do it and then see what happens. Of course not. What will happen in the background that we don't think about or see is that there's some kind of modeling taking place. People would have done, will have done all the market research, all the, you know, the focus groups and check if people are interested or not and so on and so forth. But then there will be some modeling to find out, okay, if we sell X amount, this is how much we'll make because this is how much will cost us to make it in the first place. If you don't have the costs, then you don't know how much to sell it for. And if you don't have uh, that in place, then you basically you could be making something that, um, that sounds like it's going to make you a lot of money, but in fact, you're actually making a loss. You know, you could sell something for £100, yeah? Let me give you a different example. Look at Primark. Primark is notoriously known as cheap and cheerful clothing, yeah? Cheap and cheerful, budget conscious, value for money, shopping. Yet, even through the years of um, the recession that we had and the, the, you know, the credit crunch, you know, companies like Primark didn't suffer, yeah? If anything, they gained an advantage. Why? Because their 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 business um, um, philosophy and strategies is all about selling as cheap as possible. Um, 
so let's make a comparison now. Primark, you know, a typical T-shirt, let's just say a simple black T-shirt from Primark with the label on the inside, so it doesn't say anything on the outside. Simple black T-shirt could be about five to six pounds. Yeah, might be wrong. Just bear with me for the sake of the argument, for the for the example. And then compare with a simple black T-shirt from, say, Prada. Both made from cotton. They're both black. And they both have similar, if not the exact same design. The Prada one, very easily, what, 50 to 100 pounds, maybe more, right? Now, typically speaking, most of us will say straight away, right, Prada's going to be making more money. Now, like for like, yes, you might be right. Buying one T-shirt, that one T-shirt is probably making more money uh, for Prada than for Primark, who's selling that one T-shirt. Yeah, that five pound T-shirt, let's just say, cost them fifty p to make, so they're making four pounds fifty per T-shirt. That five, uh, that that hundred pound T-shirt from Prada, give or take, may have cost them similar, or let's just say, for argument's sake, ten fifteen pounds, twenty pounds. Yeah. So there's a a bigger profit margin, absolutely, but the reason why Primark is so successful is because they sent everything for cheap, yeah, which means they they make money from bulk. Yeah, people going in and buying more, whereas most, well, a lot of people go to Prime, or Prada, or Armani, or these brands, these designer brands, they'll buy one or two items. You go to Primark, people will buy bags worth, tons of stuff, and still spend hundreds of pounds. Yeah, that's where they're winning. That's why it works for them. Okay. Going to the point. If Prada didn't do some kind of um, modeling data modeling to predict whether whether it will sell or not after doing the research and the market you know market research to see whether people are interested in that design and that kind of top they won't know whether 100 pounds is too much or too little there has to be some kind of modeling they have to look at how much it costs in the first place how many t-shirts are they making for that amount and therefore the question is okay what percentage do they want to make because by looking at the cost and that percentage then they can work out the minimum price that they should be charging because otherwise let's just say that top that's 100 pounds what if it did actually cost 100 pounds to make or let's just say it cost um 99 pounds all of a sudden that 100 pound top isn't really making them that much money it's only a pound so you have to consider the cost and therefore you have to look at the modeling i'll give you a different example um, for, you know, for years people have, you know, you may or may not know, you may be a car, a car person or not, but the Bugatti, yeah, the Bugatti Veyron, when it first came out, the company uh, owned by VW, um, they just want to showcase what they can do, the technology. They didn't have plans to actually make and sell that car. And eventually, because of demand, they thought, okay, fine, we'll sell it. And they were making a loss for every car they actually sold, they were selling it for less than what they were actually making it for. Their costs were higher than their sale price. Now, why were they doing that? Well, they had their, their reasons for that. But it was done by purpose. Now, it would have been poor business, um, um, you know, a poor business decision choice from their part if they didn't know that that was happening. But they did that intentionally because of reputation and, you know, be the best in the industry and so on and so forth. The point I'm making is this. Companies need to know what and have a prediction, almost a guess of what it would be like if X happened or if Y happened. What if we increase the price by two pounds? Would we make more or less money? Uh, what if we reduce the costs? What would happen if we do this? What would have happen if we do that? That is what business modeling is about. So that's what data modeling is. Hopefully I've made that clear for you. What you need to do now, boys and girls, is look at these. If you turn to page 82, you'll see there's a very good table there at the bottom of page 82 of the same list of uh, sectors, business sectors. Read through those, uh, the, the, t the table. There's some examples in, uh, for each one and how uh, they could use data modeling. What you need to do is pick two and give me at least a good paragraph, a solid paragraph using Peel. Yeah? Make a point, give your, ex uh, uh, your uh, example and explain and the link is at the next point. Which two of these, with an example of their business, how they would use business uh, data modeling? What, what would they use it for? What kind of data could they be collecting? How would they use that data? What information are they you know, hoping to gain? And, ha and, and what kind of decisions are they trying to make? Yeah, They're usually around better customer service or increasing sales or reducing costs 
or um, finding weak areas, improving branches, uh, you know, the sales in branches, and the list can go on. on. As I said, there is an, ex uh, an example for each sector uh, and examples of how data modeling can be used for those businesses at the end of at the bottom of page 82. Pick two, describe them. The more detailed it is, the more uh, explanation and elaboration you uh, you put in your answers, the higher your marks will be.